gonna solve questions together. There's a couple new people, totally okay. What we're gonna do is we're gonna solve questions in a very methodical manner. We're gonna read the last sentence first. It's gonna frame our mind. Like, hey, this is what we're looking for, cool. Then we're gonna go back up to the top. Nice, easy for context. We're gonna look at it that way, okay? And then what we're trying to do is figure out what the real problem is, what context really matters, and what would we do? You know, you don't need to go crazy, but kind of put yourself in the game. Then and only then, go to the answers. Don't go to all of them, go to one. Why do you like A or why do you not like A? Just tell me why. If you don't know exactly why, do your best. If it's wrong, it doesn't bother me. And so go to each one, we'll make a decision together. Everybody else put your answers in chat. There'll be a helper to help out the person that's leading. And just for fun, uh, we'll start with Becca and uh, we'll have Warren help out. And if Becca, have you already seen stuff because you've been around a while, act like you haven't. Great. Um, I also have to drop off at 10, so this is perfect. Easy peasy. We're good to go. Um, all right. At which stage in the project should the project manager address this concern to optimize cost effectiveness? Okay. All team members on a new project want to gain the customer's trust by delivering value as quickly as possible. The project manager learns that one resource has worked with the sponsor on other projects. The resource seems to be using personal influence working with a project sponsor to increase the project's benefits realization. All right, so it's a new project. Mm -hmm. uh, sounds like everybody's trying to make their imprint um, and get noticed and prove their value. Um, one person knows the sponsor and is sort of maybe working behind the scenes with them. True. Sort of what it sounds like. Okay, so at which stage in the project should the project manager address this concern to optimize cost effectiveness? Hmm. Hmm. That's a weird way to say stuff. Like, yeah, like that doesn't seem like. Like if you had somebody really who had a buddy buddy relationship or like experience and trust and all those things with the sponsor and you were the project manager, like maybe it's cost. What would you be looking or trying to do with them, just anecdotally? I mean, I would be trying to get everybody on the team, like, you know, to be working and building a relationship with the sponsor and the stakeholders. Okay. Um, but I, okay. I don't know how cost effectiveness right. comes Maybe into Maybe of this. the time or the ever, I don't know, who knows. Um, yeah. Or it says like uh, increasing the projects, they're working together to increase the, how quickly oh, we true. get. Yeah, sure. I mean, that, that's fancy person language for uh, increased projects, benefit realization. What does that mean in like humans, not like corporate people talk? Um, the, I guess that that's generally pretty early on in the business case where you're trying to map out like how you'll get, I guess, re, get your return on investment um, okay. for doing this project. Yeah. So benefit so, realization is like, what is our return? What's our benefit yeah. from it? Right. Like, what are we, how winning? much money are we going to make? Yeah. Like increasing that, like, how can we get more out of this project? So they're, they're, they're using their leverage to say like, I think we can get more out of this if we do this, that, and the other thing, which is cool. Right. Um, so it's probably very early, right. In this. Yeah. Project. I would say so. Probably. Yeah. yeah. New so project, I guess the question early. though, is at which stage should the project manager address this concern? Yeah. And the concern is that this, I think the concern is that this, one person who already knows is buddy buddy with the sponsor has more influence so maybe they're getting more say in like how the project's going to go how it's going to run what are they going to do hmm. um, so i guess let's just look at the answers yeah let's look at the answers all right at the start of the team's performing stage okay so Performing stage is sort of mid-range on the yeah. team forming, right? So like that ladder thingy, what's the rungs of the Tuckman ladder? I think what are it's they like? Forming and then storming. Forming, norming, performing, adjoining. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> you got it. You guys did it together. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. So performing. performing is pretty far along. Um, yeah. I feel like this is really much earlier than probably the performing stage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say that's maybe too late. So I would take okay, that. Okay, dokie. B immediately after the first benefit realization. I mean, that also seems a little late too, right? If you're already realizing the benefits, then you 
you're executing in the project maybe, or even almost at the end. So I don't think that would address it. Okay. Um, Cause what, what if this person is actually giving bad advice and the other team Ooh. disagrees with them, then this, that would be too late. Okie dokie. See, during the next retrospective ceremony, I've never heard it called that before. Just a um, fancy word for like retrospective, like event meeting ceremony. Yeah. They want to get fancy with it. Yeah. So that would be like mm. during an agile thing, which I don't think we really know whether this is agile or not. So yeah, um, yeah I mean, that might be like every two weeks. That might not be a bad thing to do that. Yes, ma'am. Okay, we hang on to it. Sweet. Oh, she, she either is really good at staying calm and pausing <laughs> or she locked up. Wes, what do you think? While she's coming back, what do you think about D, man? Okay. Or, uh, yeah. That's or Warren. Warren. Sorry, it was Warren. I apologize. I was looking at Wes talking to Warren. Go ahead. Close enough. No worries. Uh, so I would do exactly what she did first, trying to figure out if it's agile or waterfall. And so when you see sponsor, I typically think waterfall, but they're talking about basically iterations so that it kind of puts it in the agile field i kind of feel like and also exactly. they're talking about value as quick as you can get it those kinds of things so that makes me think of smaller piece down um parts of a project essentially so if it is in smaller iterations and again trying to approach it without looking at the answers first i'm testing tomorrow at 8 a.m by the way um <laughs> uh at which stage the project manager addresses concern to optimize cost effectiveness. If the project's already in play, then I would be looking at the retrospective. Okay. I, I, re I really think that's probably at the next, that's the next kind of not really phase gate, but, but the next spot to be able to kind of address this uh, if it can't ha happen uh, during the flow of the, of the work, I guess. Um, so I would be thinking retrospective. So running down through these, you said D, uh, during the next resource performance review. That's a weird term a little bit anyways. Resource performance. It's like, hey, that's like to the next, like, hey, uh, quarterly, year, half yearly, yearly, like, hey, sure. uh, Warren, you've been doing great. I just want to talk to you about it. You get your time in late. We need to do better at that. Like, what kind of development opportunities are you looking to? Like, blah, blah, blah. I see you're good with blah, blah, blah. Like, that's cool. Like, that's the kind of, you know, like those kind of things. I get it. It's too late. Doesn't really seem to approach what the what the need is, anyways. Um, and so I'm kind of in agreement with C from what I've seen here. Awesome, cool way to pick it back up. Um, let's go to Wes. I called you on you and then pulled it away. What are you thinking, dude? Which answer do you like? And uh, tell me why. Well, initially I said A, but so I can see why that um, <clears throat> wouldn't be a correct answer because the performance stage like someone mentioned is more in the middle of the project so uh, i was right wrong right off right out the, the gate on that one <laughs> um no big deal. I, i'm leaning towards either c or d okay c or d all right so what talk to me if you don't mind what happens in a retrospective like that we meeting thing what happens in there i'm still learning out of terminology but i would assume that means um in that meeting you're looking back on what what went well and what went wrong yeah totally yeah the retrospective backwards i'm not good at english but retro back like bell bottoms they're going to come back like uh and so cool yeah we're looking back and then we're, we're analyzing to say yeah like what can we do better like so what's, that might going, be... what, what's going well what's going bad what can we tweak either to emphasize the importance and make more goodness or remove ourselves from the bad stuff the only thing that's twisting me up with C is how far um, along the project would you use that to make any type of uh, modifications? Okay. So then that's why I'm, I'm kind of like in D because your next resource performance review, it seems as though you could address uh, the issue. Okay, all right, that's reasonable. All right, let me ask a question. Um, well, here, I'll, I'll ask somebody else. Uh, Hazel. Um, a retrospective, like how would you define like the goal or the purpose of the retrospective? I, I talked it through, but what, what's your words for it? After, after so many sprints or at least one sprint. I like that second half. Sprint. I don't like the first yeah. half. After right. one sprint, after every sprint. Yes. Right. 
is a yes, retrospective. Ma'am. That's how I thought it went. And I also didn't see where, I, I from taking the test before, and it could be different now, is that mm-hmm. if they don't mention agile on the exam or a word that sticks out to make it agile, then you should assume that is predictive. I'm not uh, sure if that still is the same. I, uh, I don't know that's ever been true, but like, uh, I'd like it's totally okay. So I would just say, let's use the context clues. <laughs> so it's either like, if they don't tell you, it could either be, we don't know and it doesn't necessarily matter. <laughs> okay, or, or there's, uh, or there might be contextual clues that might lead us in a general direction. I picked B. You and my B. reason, yeah, I picked B, and my reason for picking B is because this project team member had it states that they work with the sponsor on other projects, so that's an advantage of if a team member of mine has worked with a sponsor, and I'm new to the sponsor, I yes. could benefit from getting some information on how the sponsor ticks. So mm-hmm. the first benefit could be immediate. It don't mean that we have to wait months for a benefit to happen. That's technically correct. And I could also take the inverse of that conversation as well. I could say, due to the fact that we're making jelly beans and it takes a long time for the jelly beans to be tested and sent out to the market and bought and stuff, it could take a long time, correct? So it Mm -hmm. could either be we get benefits tomorrow or down the road. Like, so it's not really, I don't know that we can really define like, so if we don't know exactly, like maybe we get benefits tomorrow, maybe it's two months, maybe it's a year from now, who right. knows? What about the benefit realization, like when the nickels start coming in, okay. makes it the right time to then we'll talk about how you use your influence with the sponsor. Mm-hmm. Like, that's a question. Like, what about like, oh, we're going to wait until we start getting a return before we talk about the relationship that will help us get a return. Is there something that's special? Like, don't talk to them until we start getting benefits or not. <laughs> I said a lot of words trying to make it simple. And I think I made it worse. No, I would say or not, but I still, I would still have answered that would be. That sounds okay. Okay. Well, I, I'm getting you there. I like the or not. Why the or not? Meaning like you wouldn't wait till like, who knows how long till we get the benefits. Like, yeah, who knows is it okay how to talk to them before yeah, we get benefits? Because it says immediately after the first benefit. The first, that's what stuck out to me. And it said immediately after the first benefit. So if I knew we got to a benefit and I still don't have a working relationship with this sponsor because I'm a new project manager on a new project and my resource has a relationship with them, that's how I analyzed the whole thing. I went back Understood. to the information. I would still stick with B because who okay. knows is not saying when the first benefit, it just says, um, when, when should the project manager address this concern? What was the concern? Was it a bad concern? Is concerns always bad? I don't think so. I think they're being a little loose and concerns yeah. in my mind mean negative stuff, but right. I think that like the concern, I think they're saying is it could be positive or negative. And I see right. in the chat that you said, I feel like this is positive. Mm-hmm. So that, so I think you're on B it's totally okay. But you, you realize that like, we have an opportunity. This person knows this person, right. buddy, buddy. How do we maximize or use it right? Because like, right. they do have influence and it ain't us. Right. But it could be a good thing. I mean, they could just deal with it. So Becca, welcome back. Don't worry, we kept it rolling. We're gonna just jump back in double dutch like we didn't even stop. Um, the question that Hazel had was basically between B and C and we're back to there. Like why in your opinion, would it not be prudent to wait, 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 wait until we start getting money back or or return? Why is it better to do it quicker than that? Well, I mean, we really don't know when that first benefit realization might be. It could be in like a year, right? And that seems really late. But but maybe if it's an agile environment, it's it's earlier than that. So maybe for the benefit of doubt. Um, I think that... Uh, I don't, I mean, I, I would lean towards C here, uh, but I think the, just the first benefit realization just to me seems too late. If you're already realizing benefits and you've already laid out an entire like strategy, um, probably for this. And so if, you know, it just feels late in that sense. Um, 
but but I agree now now that we're like reframing it is this a good thing or a bad thing I assume this was a bad thing that we were addressing mm-hmm. but now now I'm not so sure like that could a good be a bad point. could be a good could be I mean it seems yeah. like a good thing we have a good relation if it doesn't right. sour if we use it right like um so pick pick we're gonna pick one we're gonna get the answer and then we'll talk a teensy bit about it uh wh- which one you want uh back up? A, B, C, D, F, G. um I guess C I would lean towards C yeah okay cool all right so you guys did really good um we went deep just to break the ice get people talking we're totally good the retrospective is like an agile concept and so in sprint in like uh in scrum which is the predominant agile methodology every two weeks we'll have an iteration or a sprint Mm -hmm. and after that we sit in a room drink a cup of coffee and say what went well what didn't go well about like how we're going about leading and running the project and so if we talk objectively about that what we're trying to do is i want you to see like the the sprint and the way we do work as an engine, as a machine. Meaning like things come in, these things move up and down, the people do work and blip, pops out work. It's a machine. So what we're doing in the retrospective is we're tweaking the machine. It's either like, oh, we're really loose on how requirements come in or our ability to estimate. We need to clean that part of the machine up, our process. Or we're really, really good here And we have the opportunity to make ourselves way better if we emphasize certain things. Okay, cool. That makes the machine better. So look at it as you're looking down objectively on the machine and talking about it like mechanics on how can we make the machine better. So in this situation, what I would infer is you would recognize that, oh my goodness, one of my workers, team members, has a really good relationship with somebody who matters. And if we use that relationship correctly, we can probably get better stuff out of it. Mm So that impacts the machine of doing work. Mm-hmm. And so we say, oh, where we talk about machine betterment is in the, the, the retro, retrospective. So we talk to this person like, dude, I see you got a relationship with this person. What, how, tell me more. How did it happen? Like, blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah, I work together, whatever. Okay, what are they like? How do you, is there a way we could use this relationship to make the project better? They're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Here's some ideas. Here's how we do it. We don't want to overplay our hand or whatever. I don't know, making it up. But they would help guide us. And we talk about that. It's a safe space where we could talk about making the machine or the process better. Then we'd say, okay, let's tweak it. Let's try it. Maybe that person brings you in and talks it through or does whatever. I don't know. Brings the person in for a walk through. I don't know. But we can tweak the machine and we go, okay, cool. Let's test it. Run it, run it, run it for the next sprint. Come back and say, it's working or it's not working. Yeah, we got a better relationship. We are increasing our project benefit, project benefit realization. We're getting more out of it. So that's the way I would kind of look at it. We're making the machine better. So, so Scott, you, you would out this person and basically try to have him work with the team to take advantage of his relationship with the sponsor and bring the team into that relationship as well. Well, I mean, I would, um, the word out, I, I don't know that I would out them. Like, I would say, hey, it looks like you have a relationship. And maybe depending on the contextual situation, you might not want to have this in front of everybody. Or maybe we're open and honest. We're saying like, hey, it looks like you have a relationship. Like, how are you using it? How do you feel like it is? Like, like if I know a, a vice president or something, and I already talked to him, I'm probably going to keep talking to him. Like, But as a project manager or scrum master or whatever their role is, I'd want to understand, like, how are you using this? How can we leverage it? Do we, is this a risk? Is this like, how can we get better? Like, so I'd I'd want to at least uncover it because it does impact it. Not to say thou shall not talk or leverage, or I need you to isolate this and squeeze this person for as much as possible. Probably not going to take that side either. Something like, Mm -hmm. help us understand. Is there a way that we can get a little bit better? I don't know. Question. Ma'am. The first sentence is the only sentence that is necessary after that. The first sentence and the last three words, because the relationship for me, this is how I will answer this, would have answered it correctly right. because I don't see agile. Deliver is it because they say delivering value as quickly as possible? Because if that's the case, which makes it agile, the rest of the sentence means absolutely nothing for the question. Because now they say, at what stage should the project manager address this concern to op- what concern? To gain in the trust of the custom- customer's trust? 
What concern? What was the concern? What? Okay, cool. Carolyn, what's the concern? Positive um, concern. Positive concern is that we can use a, yes, an existing relationship. Right. So how do we, how so, do we leverage that? Or if right. We can. So the I think it, thank you very much, Kel. Um, so Hazel, I think you're right. Like the first sentence frames us to say our goal is like the first sentence is the goal. Mm -hmm. The second two sentences are the context. Mm -hmm. The last three words is good for me too, but the rest of that. And then like, this is like, how? How? And so that says go, not go out, go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, and say, hey, we want to be better with our customer and deliver stuff quicker. Mm -hmm. That's agile in life in general. Cool. Mm -hmm. I think for me, when I was looking at the question, I mm -hmm. assumed that concern was negative. So I was going with D when I thought about mm -hmm. it. Um, but now after going through this, I'm like, oh, okay, it's a positive concern. So during the retrospective. Well, if it was a negative concern, would that make C wrong? I don't know why I thought resource performance review would be one-on-one. -on -one, so you would just uh, address that concern with that. Oh, group. okay, okay. Um, so I mean, there is a there's an interesting thing there like but if it was like like they're like uh, like okay so yeah you might need to be a little bit more one-on-one -on -one to say hey let's talk it out mm -hmm. but I do think like the retrospective would be a position where we're talking about that and it is arguably I get it yeah the next thing mm-hmm this one, like we would want to talk through it, but uh, I don't know that I would want to wait. Yeah, that um, was, those are the two that I was torn between, but it's yeah. nice to hear that concern can be positive. Yeah, and it's just contextual, yeah. All right, so that's one. So we're going to keep going. Good job.